The United States completes withdrawal of its forces from Afghanistan late on Monday, ending 20 years of war that's culminated in Taliban's return to power. The United States Army also posted a photograph of the last soldier leaving Kabul. He was identified as Major General Chris Donahu, who boarded the C-17 aircraft to leave Kabul, marking the end of the United States mission in Kabul. United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said that they have suspended diplomatic presence in Kabul and transferred operations to Doha. He's added that less than 200 Americans are still left in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, as the United States pullout was complete, the Taliban rejoiced with celebratory firing. The Taliban spokesperson has said that they want to have good relations with the world and that American defeat is now a lesson for other invaders. Ominous gunfire ringing out to the Kabul airport. The Taliban celebrating the last of U.S. troops leaving at the dead of night. <laughs> Opening fire from automatic weapons after storming the airport. Moments earlier, the last U.S. evacuation flight had taken off, ending the 20-year-old U.S. military presence on Afghan soil. Major General Chris Donahue was the last U.S. soldier to leave Kabul in a C-17 jet. U.S. night vision camera photo from inside the Globemaster capturing the haunting yet iconic moment. Photos of the last batch of U.S. men evacuating showed largely empty barracks at the airport. We're here right now with the Taliban as they enter into the what was only minutes ago. Uh, it was an American-controlled portion of the military airport. Now, they're taking over. The U.S. air machines and tanks were found abandoned. Many deliberately wrecked by departing U.S. troops in order to stop the Taliban from using them. I'm here to announce the completion of our withdrawal from Afghanistan and the end of the military mission to evacuate American citizens third country nationals, and vulnerable Afghans. The last C-17 lifted off from Hamad Karzai International Airport on August 30th this afternoon at 3.29 p.m. East Coast time. The pullout ending a hasty and humiliating retreat one minute before midnight Kabul time on Monday, a full day before the 31st August troop pullout deadline could end leaving behind hundreds of U.S. citizens and abandoning thousands of Afghan allies, possibly eligible for airlift. We believe there are still a small number of Americans, under 200 and likely closer to 100, who remain in Afghanistan and want to leave. As of today, we've suspended our diplomatic presence in Kabul and transferred our operations to Doha, Qatar. We will use this post in Doha to manage our diplomacy with Afghanistan, including consular affairs. With Americans gone, it's the end of the longest U.S. war in history. It may also be curtains for freedom, for liberty and for women's rights under Taliban rule. Bureau Report, India Today. Now, Major General Chris Donahu was the last American soldier to leave Afghanistan. And this image now that was taken right with night vision optics of him leaving Kabul airport, now seen as a defining image of America's hasty and humiliating retreat from Afghanistan after 20 years of war. Major General Chris Donahu has been the last troop member to be leaving Afghanistan's Kabul airport. He is a commander of the 82nd Airborne Division, that, who can be seen leaving in a C-17 aircraft, ending America's mission in Kabul. Major General Donahu is seen stepping into a Globemaster with someone snapping him from inside the jet, capturing the fading lights of the deserted airport in the background. The image was described in the handout provided by the United States Central Command, which said that Donahu boarded the plane alone. In fact, he boarded the plane along with the uh, last U.S. ambassador there to Afghanistan, Ross Wilson, Major Danahu, was sent to Afghanistan just days ago to facilitate evacuation. And aptly, he's seen stepping into the aircraft after everyone is safely inside.
Taliban now in full control of Kabul airport after the last United States plane left the country. Top commanders of Taliban, Mullah Baradar and Anas Haqqani with Badri forces are now in Kabul. They visited Kabul airport there to take stock of what is left behind by the United States military. However, Americans disabled scores of aircrafts and armored vehicles as well as a high-tech high rocket defense system at the Kabul airport before they left. Kabul airport was on the globe's watch for the last two weeks. It was the only way out of the war torn country. Thousands of Afghans besieged the airport, some falling to their death after desperately hanging onto the side of an American C-17 military aircraft. Last week, an Islamic State suicide attack at the airport gate that killed 169 Afghans and 13 United States service members. We're, it seems we're basically approaching a big Taliban parade at the moment. And a lot of stuff here, a lot of hardware. Meanwhile, big clash between Taliban and the resistance forces in the last free province of Afghanistan, Panjshir. Ahmad Masood's aide, Fahim Dashti, has now said that Taliban attacked Panjshir last night. He claimed that in the face of seven to eight Taliban soldiers were killed and wounded. In fact, he also claimed that a couple of resistance fighters were also injured. Meanwhile, caretaker of Afghan President Amrullah Saleh has refused to surrender to the Talibani forces amid talks with the resistance front. Amrullah Saleh has called upon the global community to stand up for what's right. Maintaining that the Western community has a lot to lose, the caretaker president has said that he won't be giving in without a tough fight against the Taliban. In fact, resistance forces claim that talks with Taliban still underway. Last night there was an attack by Taliban at the entrance of the Panjshir Valley. They may have tried to test their luck to enter in Panjshir, but they were unlucky. They have lost uh, seven or eight and uh, same number uh, wounded. Uh, unfortunately, a couple of resistance personnel also were wounded. Uh, that's the latest news. Now, in a shocking statement, uh, Jam Jamaat Ulema -e Hind, the most prominent Muslim body, has now slammed co education for girls in the country. The Muslim body called for separate schools for girls and boys. Jamaat also asked for non Muslims not to send their daughters to co ed schools or colleges, alleges that mingling of boys and girls in co-ed schools leads to immorality and misbehavior by the girls. The top Muslim body urged influential and wealthy people to help construct separate schools for girls. Uttar Pradesh government has hit out at the shocking sexist diktat. UP Deputy Chief Minister has said that people with the Taliban mindset should understand that this is India, not Afghanistan. संविधान की मूल भावना पर पर हमला करने की कोशिश करते हैं वो कभी सफल नहीं होंगे और ये लोग उस तरह की मानसिकता के हैं ऐसे लोग जो लड़कियों की स्वतंत्रता के खिलाफ हैं लड़कियों के एजुकेशन के खिलाफ हैं और ये तय थोड़ी करेंगे कि बच्चियां को एजुकेशन के इंस्टीट्यूशंस में जाएंगी या जो है कहीं और जाएंगी ये ये तय नहीं कर सकते देखिए चाहे अरसद मदनी हो और चाहे कोई भी तालिबानी मानसिकता के लोग हो वह समझ लें भारत हिंदुस्तान है ये कोई अफगानिस्तान नहीं है यहाँ जो व्यवस्था चल रही है वो सफलतापूर्वक आगे बढ़ रही है पूरा देश चाहे वो बच्चे हों चाहे बच्चियाँ हों सब एक साथ पढ़ते हुए देश को प्रगति के पथ पर आगे ले जा रहे हैं जो स्कूल लेवल तक तो कोई एजुकेशन में कोई हरज नहीं है लेकिन हाँ कॉलेज लेवल पर इस पर सबको सोचने की ज़रूरत है कि किस तरीके से एजुकेशन को इस तरीके से सिस्टमाइज किया जाए कि लड़के और लड़की दोनों तालीम भी हासिल कर लें और उसमें कोई मसाइल भी ना पैदा हों जो आए Now, amid threats of a possible third wave, several state governments have reopened schools. Um, administration has issued strict guidelines for the schools. Data exclusively accessed by India Today tells us several states have, been a sh have seen a sharp increase in COVID cases right among those below the age of 17. Here's a report on that. Schools are opening again. Classrooms witnessing bustle. And here is some encouraging news. Only two states which unlocked classrooms have reasons to worry. 
Apart from Punjab and Bihar, other states have only a marginal rise in COVID in kids in the last two months. The state of Punjab, where in July, there were 6.5% samples that are tested positive below the age of 17 years. In the month of August, there is a rise of about 9.6%, where 16.1% samples have tested positive. This upward trend is also being seen in the state of Bihar, where Bihar recorded 6.2% samples of those below 17 years were tested positive. And now in August, 11.5% samples of those below 17 years have tested positive, which is a rise of about 5.3%. State of Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Nagaland, Chhattisgarh have also seen more than 2% rise in cases of those below 17 years testing positive. But there are some states like Jharkhand, where schools have partially reopened, that have seen a negative trend where there's a decline of about 0.8% in those who have tested positive less than the age of 17 years. So this data clearly shows that where states have reopened schools and children remain unvaccinated are looking at a rise in cases of children being infected with COVID-19. Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Nagaland, Chhattisgarh saw only around 2% rise in the positive samples of children. Uttar Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Mizoram are showing marginal increase of between 1.5 to 1%, with Haryana only recording a spike of 0.6% infections in children from July to August. Even Kerala, contributing the most to the COVID numbers in India, registered a slight decline in the number of kids with COVID, while Maharashtra, Jammu and Kashmir, West Bengal, Delhi, Telangana, Manipur, which have not resumed schools, also saw fewer children testing positive. प्रॉब्लम ये हमारे साथ हम सब चीज खोलना चाहते हैं बॉल खोलना चाहते हैं उसका रिस्क लेना चाहते हैं थर्सडे फ्राइडे जो इवनिंग बाजार है जिसमें बहुत भीड़ होती है उसको खोलना चाहते हैं एंड उसको हम साइड करते हैं कि लोगों को कमर्शियल एंगल को साइड करते हैं बट क्या अभी हमने सोचा है इन बच्चों का क्या नुकसान अगर कोविड फैलता है मोस्टली स्कूल से नहीं फैलता ये कम्युनिटी में फैलता है जो स्कूल है वो उसका रिफ्लेक्शन है ये हमें अंडरस्टैंड करना पड़ेगा Parents, while often allowing kids to venture out in public and even taking vacations with them, are still unsure about return to schools. The real question is, the data could become a ready reckoner for states that are sitting on the fence to decide whether this seems to be the right time to reopen schools, even as children remain vulnerable and unvaccinated against COVID-19 and even school staff that needs to be vaccinated on priority to contain the spread of infection after schools reopen. With Sanjeev Kumar in New Delhi, this is Milan Sharma for India Today. Now, Telangana High Court has stayed reopening of schools across the state for a week's time. Classes for KG to PG in private and government schools and institutions of higher learning as well were all set to reopen from tomorrow. However, the High Court has now said that no students from any class need to be in school currently. Then, and neither can any student be compelled for physical classes. High Court has also stayed reopening of residential schools and hostels. In fact, this comes right after several parents were scared to send their children to schools amid reports of a possible third wave. Earlier, Chief Minister KCR had directed officials to open up of schools and higher education centres with safety measures. My name is Ali Hussain and I am studying fifth class and I am not vaccinated. I am not going to school. I opposed Telangana, Telangana government order for reopening school. एक तरफ हुकूमत बता रही है कि हम थर्ड वेव में जा रहे हैं डेल्टा वायरस की तरफ और यह भी कोई अकाउंटेबिलिटी नहीं है टीचिंग एंड नॉन टीचिंग स्टाफ वैक्सीनेटेड है या पेरेंट्स ये बच्चों की जान से जो सो खेलने की कोशिश की जा रही है फेस वाइज किया जाना चाहिए मिड ऑफ द ईयर में कोई स्कूल का स्टार्टिंग का टाइम नहीं है तो अब सोशल डिस्टेंस का छोटे क्लासेस में जो बच्चे पढ़ रहे हैं वहां पे सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग कैसी होगी बच्चों को जो सो आप कैसा मैनेज करेंगे वहां पे now, the flood situation in Assam has worsened. Over 2,58,000 people, including 47,400 children across 16 districts, have been affected. The state administration has now opened 24 relief camps and 67 distribution centers to help people in dire times. Prime Minister Modi dials Assam Chief Minister and assures all help. Here's more on that.
Ravager Sam once again. Brahmaputra is in spate, derailing lives and livelihoods. मेरा घर में आज तीन दिन से पानी है और इस पानी में बच्चा का चोट जीने के लिए बहुत दिक्कत होता है खाना भी ना सब गैस पानी कुछ नहीं लकड़ी भी नहीं है कैसे जाएंगे ना कोई कमाई है ना कोई इनकम है कुछ नहीं है ना बर्बादी बर्बादी हो रहा है 70% of forest camps in the Kaziranga National Camp, famous for the one-horned rhino, are now inundated. The forest department has begun patrolling the camps using boats to check on the animals. Frantic wild animals have come out of the park and entered nearby villages. The Kaziranga authorities say that four hog deer have been killed in the deluge. <laughs> মানে আমার ফেকল খেনির গটি বিধি যাতে আমি নিদারণ করিব পারো যাতে জীব জন্তুর একো ক্ষয় ক্ষতি নহয় সেই কারণে আমি এটো ব্যবস্থা কৰিছো আৰু ভায়োলেশন কৰিলে যেতিয়া আমাৰ ফাইন হ'ব এটো আপোনাৰ এটো আপোনাৰ 5000 ওভার 2.58 লাখ পিপল ইনক্লুডিং 47400 চিলড্রেন আর এফেক্টেড ইন দ্য কারেন্ট ওয়েভ অফ ফ্লাড ইন দ্য স্টেট মোর দ্যান 1 লাখ পিপল আর এফেক্টেড ইন লখিমপুর ডিস্ট্রিক্ট অ্যালোন ফলোড বাই 57000 পিপল ইন মাজোলি and 35500 in dhemaji over 24000 hectares of farmlands are flooded across the state the statue of lord vishnu on a vertical pillar floating in the brahmaputra near the chakreshwar temple now faces drowning an indication of how the water has risen in the river the state administration has opened 24 relief camps and 67 relief distribution centers over 6000 people are currently in these relief camps bureau report india today india's singraj adana becomes the latest paralympian from the country to win a medal at the tokyo 2020 olympics 39 year old singraj who hails from faridabad won the bronze medal in the 10 meter air pistol sh1 event singraj finished with a total of 216.8 points he pipped china's xiao long lu by 0.3 points to finish third in the finals Singrad's bronze is the eighth medal for India at this year's Paralympics the country's best ever medal haul at the quadrennial event